Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ina and today I'm going to talk about zygopetalum orchids. So I decided to do this video because I have this beautiful plant here with two flower spikes. And I have seen lots of people across the internet saying that for them it's quite tricky to grow zygopetalum orchids. And for me, it's one of the easiest ones. But I live in London, inside my flat. The temperature outside is quite cool, cold. So I have like intermediate temperature inside my flat all year round, which plays a very important role in growing uh, this plant successfully. Uh, if you live in another place that it's quite hot, so you may have to adjust some of the things that I'm gonna say here. So I'm not exporting anything. Uh, I have just some experience growing this plant inside my flat. So that's a personal journey. Bear that in mind here, everything with a grain of salt. Uh, and without further ado, I hope you enjoy this video. This one is my biggest zygo. It's a hybrid, actually, it's not a species. I don't think any of the ones that I have are a species. They are all hybrids. One of them came to me as a surprise box, so I have no idea how it will bloom. The only thing that I know is that it is a zygopetalum. I would say that this one is a very easy to grow hybrid. Before I talk about my plants specifically, uh, what I want to tell you is a little bit about zygopetalum. Zygopetalum orchids uh, are mainly epiphytes, terrestrial and semi-terrestrial plants. All of these species, they grew uh, in South America, Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia. And because of their habitat, they usually are in dump and uh, intermediate temperature inside the jungle. So when you think about your zygopetalum, how are we gonna keep them? It's very important to bear in mind their natural habitat. Another thing that is interesting about these flowers is that even the, the parents, I mean the species, they do have sometimes green petals and sepals with purple white lips with a very strong fragrance. So the color can camouflage this flower in the forest. It's quite cool because they are very different from cattleyas and phalaenopsis that can be quite vivid, I would say. These ones, they tend to go through the purple, whitish, greenish tones. The fragrance is to attract their pollinators. They are pollinators mainly by insects. If you have fragrance sensitivity, I would tell you to be careful with these plants. I do have fragrance sensitivity. And I remember the first time I had that in my living room, the first time I saw it blooming, I couldn't stay very close to it because its fragrance is sweet and strong and it makes me a little bit sick. So now it stays in my bedroom, but it has fragrance during the day, but not at night time. So it doesn't bother me too much. Another thing that I have to tell you is I live in a flat. This one was gifted to me in 2020 for my birthday. It was a medium sized plant. It's huge now. So if you don't have much space, be careful because zygo, they can actually grow and they will become massive plants, just to let you know. So now I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about their care, how I keep them in London, uh, what I would advise you to do if you have never tried buy one and maybe you can try and see what happens. So I'm gonna guide you through about their requirement for light, humidity, which type of soil I pot them in, and that what has been my journey with Zygos. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do enjoy it, please hit the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel, which actually helps me a lot. And let me know if you have any Zygos uh, and what you think about them, what's your experience as well. I'd love to hear more about you. Uh, and about your experience with plants. As I mentioned, this one is the biggest zygote that I have, was the first one that was gifted to me. It has beautiful flowers. This one is missing one of its petal, but it has two flower spikes. It's very healthy. I'm gonna show you the leaves as well. 
talking about its care, I would tell you that zygos, they grow into intermediate to highlight. Uh, if you live in a place like me that we don't have much natural light, I think you can grow them in window seals, but I do grow them under my growing lights. That's the first thing. The second thing, and I think that's why most people struggle with zygos, it's because um, they need lots of humidity to grow. So uh, they are quite thirsty plants. So bear that in mind. If you can water them often and frequently, I'm sure you'll be able to bloom your zygo. So the only thing that I offer them is enough water, fertilizer uh, sometimes, uh, some bright light, some grow lights, the same growing lights that I offer to my other orchids. Uh, and the result is this huge plant here. Another thing that you should consider is where you will pot this plant. So I'm gonna show you now. My plant is actually potted in soil. Uh, as I mentioned, zygos, they are not only epiphytes, they are semi-terrestrial as well. And uh, for me, in soils, they grow very, very, very well. This zygo here, I, I hope you can see some roots there. This zygo here blooms twice a year for me. If you provide, I think, intermediate temperatures to it. What I would advise you is to be careful with the temperature. Apparently, zygos hate too hot weather. And if the weather is too hot, you have to keep uh, watering it, checking the soil or checking the median to see if the plant needs more water or not. I know that uh, some people say that it grows zygos very well in cocoa peach as well. So cocoa peach is quite fine medium for orchids. So I think it's really nice. You should try cocoa peach. Uh, this one I bought last year. It came in bloom. It has green flowers. The fragrance is very similar to the other one. And here, I'm not sure, ah, okay. Uh, I didn't put this one in, in soil. I think I didn't have soil back then. So this one is potted in moss. So as you can see, it's quite healthy as well. And it's growing very, very well. One advantage of having it in moss is as like soil and cocoa peat moss I stay humid for longer so if you live in a very hot climate I would advise you to go to something that can help the plant grow another thing is they do have thin leaves which helps them to transpirate a lot for them to grow healthy you need to provide them with intermediate temperature and again water them frequently the last thing that I'm gonna tell you is that if you do live in a place with intermediate temperature, the most important thing is not exactly the soil that you choose, but how you treat your plants and uh, if you know your environment. So that's what I was mentioning. Like for me, they grow very well. This one came almost dead and uh, <laughs> I resuscitated. <laughs> I gave it plenty of humidity. It's potted only in it's moss. I'm gonna try to focus on the root here. I hope you can see there is a root there. And uh, if you go below the pot, it's possible to see the root there as well. So has was rootless, completely rootless. And now it has three tiny three bulbs and it's working on the fourth one here. So it's possible to revive zygos. They are lovely to grow. I love growing them. Uh, they, they give me so much joy. That was all that I have to say today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Remember to hit the like button uh, if you enjoy it. I would love to hear back from you. Uh, if you have any comments about Zygopatalum, if you have these orchids at your home, they are lovely to grow. They are beautiful and exotic, quite wild type of orchids different from the ones that we find in flower shops actually. They are affordable as well. These three, they require affordable plants. So, which adds up. 
Uh, that's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope to see you soon next time. Bye bye.